every time we go on vacation, we continue to work out and we find ways to move our bodies. It's just, it's ingrained in us. We were in the Ball Harbor area, and if you're familiar with that at all, you know like that part of Northern Miami Ball Harbor has this amazing boardwalk. It actually stretches all the way down to South Beach. And so yeah. we got a mile down and it was like, okay, well, if we turn around now, it's two miles. You and I usually go three or two or mm -hmm. three, three or four miles. So I was like, I'm gonna actually try to go another mile. That'll put me out too. I'll turn around, come back, there'll be four. You know, like, I don't know that I'm gonna quite go that far. So I take off ahead of you. Well, I get half a mile down and I'm like, whoa. Um, once I started speeding up, I'm like, I am spent. And so I turned around and start coming back. I come up on you, you're walking. At this point, I'm like dying, you know, as well. Yeah, and all of a sudden, I, I started to see white spots and I knew I was in trouble. All right, guys, back with you. 6 p.m. Eastern time here in Columbus, Ohio. Kind of got that fall weather coming in. Yeah, for sure. So. Yesterday, well, no, Monday. It finally felt like fall and I broke out my jacket. I was like, I'm gonna do this. I brought deodorant with me just so in case I got hot in the office. Oh. <laughs> like you wear a jacket, the risk is you're gonna get really warm and then sweaty. So Oh, so you bring deodorant so like if halfway through mm -hmm. you have to like reapply? Oh yeah. Really? Sure. Yeah. Oh. It's just a tiny little little product. Oh, so I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Cool. Did you get this? I did. A little f French blue Bordeaux rosé. It's probably our last one of the season. Je vois la vie en rose. La, ro <laughs> la rosé. Je vois la vie en rosé. He took French. Yeah, it's not, horrible at it. But, uh, yeah, we're about end of rosé season. Well, I told you forever so. that you should just... I mean, you could get anything you wanted if you just would speak that language to me. <laughs> right? Anything I want. Right, ladies? <laughs> One, I wouldn't have any idea what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just, you know, it's like the language of love. Yeah. Wow. Well, cheers. How's, well, cheers. How's your week been? Yeah, it's been good. Really busy. Yeah. Uh, definitely. You've launched your master class. Congratulations. I did. Thank you. It might be why you're taking, just taking deep breaths right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been, <laughs> it's just been a lot, uh, okay. a lot today. We're um, just going to find our Zen here with everyone. Yeah. Um, what are we talking about? Well, your master class. how did it go? Did you have fun? <sighs> yeah, no, it was good. We launched uh, Sunday night. Uh, I've got a good group. Feel good about it. Um, Sunday nights at six o'clock, two hour session. This was the first one kicking it off. I think we... I think I technically have 13 people in it. There was 11 on that call. Um, so yeah, ton of fun. It's awesome. Yeah. So is it interactive? Yeah, I usually, so I plan for a two hour session, I plan about 60 to 80 minutes of my content. It's broken up into like concepts or components or whatever. So I usually plan four of those, talk about those for 15 to 20 minutes a piece, then get some interaction questions that kind of go along with it and then get back into the next concept that's cool wow yeah. i can't wait to hear like all the stories from it and testimonials uh I, i'm not allowed in it because <laughs> i'm not a dentist i'm not bitter but <laughs> i know the value and the quality of this master class and i wish i could be in it because regardless of the industry you would just grow so yeah yeah okay well, anyway so that's fun we'll see uh how's your week well, we've kind of been just even pivoting our live show, and so it hasn't been every Wednesday night, um, but we're kind of, we're selecting certain evenings where it's working for us, and a couple weeks ago, we went on, uh, celebrated our 24th anniversary on August 24th. I feel like I'm a little far away from you. Yeah, August 24th was our 24th anniversary. <laughs> 24 and 24. I think that that's kind of special. So I don't know. We went back and forth and then just decided we weren't going, we were going to go away and um, celebrate. So yeah, we went to Florida. It was, well, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was one of my favorite trips away with you. Really? Actually. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. How come? Definitely. What do you think made it um, stick out? The sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the sleep. One morning, I <clears throat> have struggled with insomnia and just my airway and different things that affect really deep sleep. And so I slept one morning. It was the next morning we flew in uh, Sunday. I slept until 1030, which is unprecedented for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was kind of wondering, were you concerned about me? Were you going to come check on me? <laughs> no. No. I was enjoying my time out on the balcony. <laughs> I mean, we hung yeah. out together. Yeah. So. No, I got up at nine and just, yeah, I was out on the balcony reading, made coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So it was nice. Cool. Definitely slowing down. I mean, obviously like this, this show has been, I mean, it's been hard for us to get into this the last couple, like well, month. Why do you think that is? Like we haven't been able to do it every week. Well, because I don't know, we went back to work. I mean, well, we, we worked all through COVID. So I guess that's not, there was nothing different. The hustle isn't different. Right. I do feel that there's been some travel added back in. Yeah. So. Well, not just ding, me. Ding, ding. No, I know. I mean, <laughs> right. well, I mean all of us. Yes. And we, we have some, we're, we're working with a dental specialist. And so our family is flying out to Arkansas every six weeks six yeah. to seven weeks right now and so i would say the travel you know you your consulting has um kind of picked back up but not entirely up. like yeah what it was mm -hmm. i mean it's a fraction of what it was but yeah we've had this which i think probably next uh, next episode we may talk about the um the arkansas trips a little bit more because yeah. it's a super interesting thing definitely um but yeah it's just like it's just life and i think it's kids and school rebooting and everything it's like I mean, <laughs> makes you go, oh yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on. It's funny because I actually, before we move on, I mean, I actually have some fond memories of quarantine and part of that was it felt like everything was on pause hmm. and it really, I embraced being present more than I do now, more than all of a sudden, you know, Caden's, Caden's basketball schedule is like back at it and right. We're running back and forth and figuring out how are we going to work, do that, get him to every single workout that he wants to get, you know, get into. Right, because it's six days a week of stuff. Oh my gosh. And Leah's and, and you know. Piano lessons and guitar piano lessons and art, and art, and art classes. <laughs> so all that's like full right. force again. Right. It's, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's some reasons behind it. There are reasons. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure out our show. We're not going to stop it because yeah. we're having too much fun with it, but. Yeah. I'm actually over here downing water because I just came back. It's actually uh, plain LaCroix because uh, I just came back from a run. So, I mean, you I, love your LaCroix. Yeah. Don't you? I love the plain ones. I do. I actually put a few drops of pepper, peppermint. <gasps> pepper, pepper. I finally got him sold on yeah. one of the essential oils and it's peppermint. Yeah. In a carbonated water. It's super good, especially okay. after a run. But I walked in about 4.45. I was like going out, got four miles in, came in, set up the show, took a shower. No, I came in at four forty-five. From I got home from work, oh, like I'm from sorry. the office. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Went out for a run, but um, but that reminds me, like we had a really interesting run story in Miami. Did you want to tell them about that? <laughs> it's so embarrassing. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I also don't know what's going on with my hair. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was wondering. I, just, I was going to ask. Sorry, I'm, I'm bugging it. Yeah. Okay, it's, I'm making it worse. Yeah, just get that under we control. We need like a hairstylist for the show <laughs> or something. Come on with this. <laughs> We went on, I have, we have been to Florida a lot. We have done a lot of beach runs. Every time we go on vacation, we continue to work out and we find ways to move our bodies. It's just, it's ingrained in us. So I'm not a really great, I'm not a fast runner, but I'm happy with where I am, I guess. I still have improvement, you know, um, goals, but. Sure. Went running. Uh, with you, we did two runs. This, this, the second run, our last run was really interesting because we get out there and I'm like, I have ran, on, I have ran on Florida beaches and we were actually running on a, on a boardwalk, but I have ran on Florida beaches for years. I mean, this is not new to me. Yeah. And well, it was about 80, it was like 84 degrees out there, but in Florida weather with the humidity and the heat index that it gets up into the nineties, like pretty quick. 
So I think it said it felt like 92, but even a Florida 92 is like different. Oh my gosh. It was so humid. So while we were there, it was just a lot of, well, we had a, like a day and a half of rain yeah. and wind and we kind of just pushed through it, but it just increased the humidity. And I don't know what happened to me. I, I think I had maybe if, I don't know, I might've eaten something that morning. I might not have, I, I'm not sure. Oh yeah. I think it was just straight up heat exhaustion. Oh yeah, but I just mean I, which I think contribute contributed to the heat exhaustion. Yeah. Was just. Well, I, mean, I was like feeling it too. So I mean, we got we got a mile. We were in the Ball Harbor area, and if you're familiar with that at all, you know like that part of northern Miami Ball Harbor has this amazing boardwalk. It actually stretches all the way down to South Beach, and so it's kind of between the line of hotels, resorts, and the beach. Um, so you kind of get on it, go running. It's mm -hmm. really awesome uh, for that, for walking and running. Yeah. We got a mile down, and it was like, okay, well, if we turn around now, it's two miles. You and I usually go three or two or mm -hmm. three, three or four miles. So I was like, I'm gonna actually try to go another mile. That'll put me out two. I'll turn around, come back, that'll be four. You know, like, I don't know that I'm going to quite go that far. So I take off ahead of you. Well, I get half a mile down, and I'm like, whoa. Um, once I started speeding up, I'm like, I am spent. And so I turned around and start coming back. I come up on you. You're walking. At this point, I'm, like, dying, you know, as well. Yeah, and all of a sudden, I, I started to see white spots, and I knew I was in trouble. And <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I don't feel good. I'm not going to make it. I'm literally not even going to make it walking back. I kept, go I kept going run run joanna like you're fine you right know? Yeah. do this walk I for mean, a little bit and then like great let's go yeah again. and then go half a mile and then stop but like right. come on then you take 25 steps and you're like oh i actually can't keep running anymore <laughs> yeah no i so it, it just kicked my butt so i have to say that was probably one of the biggest uh experiences with you um on empathy i mean you oh, yeah. were uh he was the kindest person maybe I've ever seen. He didn't he didn't shame me or embarrass me. He just nursed me back to help, help me like sit down. And because I was about to pass out. My face was white. I did not look good. And just like when I'm in labor and things are really terrible, if something's really terrible, I get really quiet. Just quiet. Yep. And stop talking. <laughs> that's his cue that something's, something's really wrong. wrong. <laughs> something is wrong with Happens her. It's very rarely when it does there's something wrong. Yeah. So that's DoorDash. Door wow, they said it was going to be an hour. That was funny, faster. <laughs> so you helped me back, and we sat like we got into the resort, and then sat down, and I was just drinking Gatorade. And well, at one point, no, I mean, at one point, I knew you weren't doing good just walking, like yeah, you know, because it was like, okay, let's just stop running, let's just walk, and then I'm like watching you, and I'm like, oh, this actually isn't even working, so. I was like, sit down, and you like kind of squat down. I'm like, no, no, sit down on your butt. I don't want to sit like on the ground with all the yeah. hands. Yeah, <laughs> but you did, and I sat down. We kind of sat there for about ten minutes and just caught our breath, <laughs> got back up it's, real slow. It's very unlike us. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I got to the uh, the pool. Like walked into the, the gate with the pool area and got you like a. It's like, what do you have? Cranberry juice, orange juice, like just something with some sugar. Oh yeah, actually, that's what you did. Get yeah. that, and then I went down to the to the snack area and got you a bag of chips. I'm like, I need some more salt. I need salt, sugar. I need electrolytes. I need. Yeah, it's you making knew what you to take do. magnesium. You like, knew you what magnesium. To do. Let's yeah. pop that. Uh, oh yeah, I found you like a, a Gatorade. Yeah. yeah. So it was just everything. Just I, I actually yeah. drank the Gatorade with red food dye because I felt like oh. I was um, not going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a huge exception for me. Drink this or you'll die. But thank you yeah. for taking care of me. Of course. And that's I mean, what just I do. well, I mean, it was extremely like you wooed me. It was very sweet. Oh, wow. My gosh. Yeah. All over again. Yeah. So. We had a good time. I mean, one of my highlights was uh, definitely dinner at the, um, she went to the Versace mansion, had dinner, uh, super cool experience. I mean, just gosh, Miami people watching is ridiculous um, and amazing, is but um, super, I mean like decent food, like it was okay. Um, yeah. I mean, probably, I mean, obviously a little overpriced for probably what they do, but um, but yeah, it's but the, the, Yeah, the experience, the mansion, all of that was definitely very cool. Yeah. So. Worth going for, worth going to for that. I don't know that the food was, like, it wasn't like great. Right. 
But. Most people, for what you spend, they're probably going to not be happy, especially from the Midwest. You go and you spend that, and then you're yeah. like, oh, I mean, we're no. food snobs, so our standards <laughs> are pretty high. Yeah, sure. interesting part that uh, Miami Dade County was under a curfew, which we, we didn't know. I mean, we weren't actually staying there, we just drove down there for dinner that night. But uh, all the restaurants were at 10, 10 o'clock, everybody's got to be out. So, I mean, we're there, we paid our bill, we're actually taking a photo, and at 10 07, they flipped the lights on. And all of a sudden, like, we're seeing sirens, like, flashing, lights flashing outside, hearing sirens. We go out. It's like, I mean, you said it was almost like martial law. It's it was. These... I felt like it was the Hunger Games. <laughs> and one, we're not in Ohio and, like, our, our neighborhood. So I, I just was like, get me the heck out of here. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. I, I don't want to get arrested. Yeah, I'm just police and like the the tricked out go karts and cars and they're all blasting yeah. this announcement like Miami Dade County is now under curfew and you're kind of just like where am I right now? I mean it was intense and just police everywhere streets like blocked off legit. streets like yeah. it's way more than Columbus Ohio a little bit <laughs> <laughs> so calm down all you Ohioans when you think that yeah. things are tough here there's a little photo from our our hotel balcony just enjoying the the Oh. Florida and this makes makes you want to go back there. Huh? It, it does. I was just gonna say that. What is yeah. that, man? I don't know. Yeah. I hear all these sayings like, if you're living for vacation, you're not living the right life. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Hey, I know you got something fun to talk about this week uh, on what to because you've kind of switched up your your morning uh, beverage routine. I have. Yes. Okay. So, tell us about that. I'm trying matcha. And March, matchabar.com, this is where I'm getting, they source some really great ceremonial grade matcha. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. Not all matcha is that green. It's green. Ooh, it's do like you see the little like smoke? Incredible Hulk green. So matcha is very new to me. It's very ancient and not new to most of you. But I decided I wanted to switch up my low acidity coffee game from Sumatra Starbucks. I'm sorry, Starbucks. But I might return. <laughs> because I'm possibly going through major coffee withdrawal. But matcha has been very fun to experiment with. And you had this really cool kit that you... I do. I got that like a, a year or so ago. I just really have never used it. I like... I just love all of the assets that come with it. Hmm. It's super fun. All the tools you can use. So I've re so I, this is my... Um, I've done it for three mornings. So Monday was my first time trying matcha tea. I can't do it now because it has caffeine. Uh, but it is way less in it. It's less caffeine than coffee? Less caffeine than coffee. Okay. Does it tell you how much caffeine is on this? Um, or in this? On it? In it? I mean, I want to mm. say it's something like two-thirds what coffee probably has. Okay. As far as caffeine. <laughs> um, but some of the benefits are supposed to be lower cholesterol, reduces the effect of stress, promotes weight loss detoxifies your body, boosts energy, promotes healthy skin and teeth, um, benefits emotional and cognitive health, yay. Uh, and it also boosts fertility. Oh, that's important. <laughs> For, in your, yeah. Well. In our life, yeah. I mean, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, you know, watch out, Josh Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Cos Cosmopol. I'm not done. You want more kids? <laughs> you need to drink your matcha. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Cosmopolitan.com says a, a matcha hit or like a serving of matcha provides 34 milligrams of caffeine, which is the same amount as a brewed cup of coffee, which is not true at all. Um, it probably depends on where you do your. Uh, so. Oh. To give you some perspective, a a shot of espresso is 50 milligrams of caffeine. So 34 in matcha is less than one shot of espresso. But if you get a grande Americano at Starbucks, there's three shots in that. So that's 150 milligrams. So you're about a fifth or fourth, oh, a fifth, 25 okay. to... So way less than. Yeah, so about, yeah, a fourth of like a grande Americano for sure. Oh, okay. Um, but in even Starbucks coffee, like there's no way Starbucks coffee has 34 milligrams of caffeine. I mean, Starbucks coffee is actually off the chart with, with caffeine. Right. Um, I think their grande coffee actually is more around 200 milligrams. It's like legit. So, yeah, so it's, so you got a little caffeine boost, but it's maybe 25% or so. So I've been dragging a little bit. Um, 
so I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, I just swapped it out. I didn't even like try coffee for the past three days. I just let it go. Yeah. And I've just pivoted. Uh, I've been experimenting with different milks with um, my little frother. Hmm. Can you hear that? Podcasters. Sure. Yep. This could serve as like a little back massage probably. <laughs> Maybe. I think you're going to break it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's though. super fun and I took some photos that I don't know I'll show on social or something but I, I mean I have officially come to a place where I'm super happy with my my matcha tea and my little froth and my little honey on it oh cool it's very beautiful yeah so awesome that time will tell good. are you reading a book uh started a new book on our little weekend help I work with people turn it around look how happy Hold the on. author getting is. good at influence leadership and people skills uh, this is Chad Veach. He's actually a, uh, a pastor in the, the Los Angeles area oh, cool. in LA. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, but good book. I mean, I would read it just for this. If you're this happy, oh. if you look this happy, it's, it's I'm like, man, huh? what's your sauce? Yeah. All right. Attractive man writing a book. Oh. Would, call, would make you read it. <laughs> I didn't say he was attractive. I mean, the topic of the book doesn't matter, but if they're, you put an attractive man I on said the he back, was happy. It, yeah. It doesn't matter. Happy, good looking. A happy human. Yeah, you'll read the book. <laughs> I'd pick up this book. You should turn it around. They should sell it like this. <laughs> put him looking at I, me when I, when I walk by. Oh my gosh. I pick it up. Like, okay. Who's that happy man? So what do you think of it? Who is a happy man? No, it's it's not. You're <laughs> totally going in the wrong direction with this. He has a really big smile and he looks sincere. Um, why can't it sincere. be that? Sincere, yep. Josh. Uh, good book. Um, three parts. Number one, he starts with you. like Because if you want to work with people, then you got to work on your own leadership. Uh, and then he talks about working with people specifically like kind of individually and then he talks about working with people as a group so kind of three major parts so you know it's it's good he's he's a fantastic speaker i, I think the the book's super solid um i'm about halfway through so i'm still kind of withholding judgment but yeah, yeah it's worth it so i uh <laughs> i don't know i just thought it was funny because you're an introvert so i think that that's a very appropriate book for you to read yeah, I don't necessarily feel like that. I love working with people with our team, so I don't. I, I kind of. But what do you do? You love working with your wife and your family. Of course, I do. Those yeah. are people in my team. <laughs> okay. So when you say team, I was like, well, who's in your team? Yeah, no, I just mean like I don't. I think some people look at that and they're like, oh my gosh, yes, that's me. Like help, I work with people. Like I don't know what to do. And I, I don't feel like that's the case at all because I've always really enjoyed that, but. Well, I think the reality is I was talking with two of my friends today who do consulting and they do a lot of EOS. Uh, Entrepreneurial operating system. Thank you. Coaching. You can say that faster than me. But they are, they work with teams and they help them thrive all the time. And so we just continually talk about how difficult it can be. The reality is it's difficult working with people. And so we constantly have to figure that out, navigate that, and get better at it. So, I mean, that's why I'm saying that to you. Because yeah. if we're just always dumbfounded at some of the stuff that happens with team members or people, you know, like especially in a uh, company or organization, agency, you know, dynamic. I mean, I was on the phone with, on a creative call today, and... You know, he has, the employer has 175 to 200 employees coming in. It's crazy. In man. person. You know who you are. Shout out to you. And he said, yeah, he, he said it's something. <laughs> he I'll probably feels confidence. like this. Yeah. yeah. He's probably like, oh. Maybe. Right. But, you know, it's, there's always, he said every day something happens with someone. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? yeah. At that it, level and that amount of people. Yeah. It's just... I, right. You can't even bypass that. Right. So. Yeah, we're like a tenth of that, and so every now and then something happens, but. <laughs> we're probably pretty spoiled. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, school's back in this that week. That is the current situation, people. Not, not really this week, but I mean, kind of, we're back in full swing. Uh, Labor Day week was yeah. kind of a short week for our kids and still integrating into that schedule. Uh, our son is still in a hybrid situation, but um, Monday is actually back full-time in person right 
I think so. Yeah. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. So our daughter's full time back in person. Our son's on a hybrid schedule, but that should change next week. Just show our little, um, I can't, but no. I mean, I could get it. But anyways, our calendar is very colorful because I'm color coding where each kid is when. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because normally it's just you go to school and all you have to track are really, you know, um, practices and extracurricular stuff. Yeah. And now it's we at a whole nother level. Sports and music yeah. lessons and all that yeah. type of stuff. So yeah. And different do, schools. So they're different places. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to know just anyone who's watching our live Facebook audience, how you feel about virtual in person or hybrid. I know that it's, there's a lot of mixed, a lot of mixed, um, feedback and polls going on right now. So we'll do our own not so late show poll. Yeah. Where did you get this one from? Uh, this one was actually from the Washington post. Oh, cool. Okay. But it was in, you know, July, the end of July. So hmm. I think my, <laughs> something that occurred to me was, well, now that all the virtual parents have turned into homeschooling teachers, I wonder if this, you know, percentage is skewed and would change yeah. because of that, because now they've experienced it for a few weeks. Yeah. And for those of you on the podcast listening who can't see the graphic, it's about 18 or two, uh, 1,200 people uh, surveyed K through 12 parents on um, should schools be following a hybrid model, mixed model, in person model, like whatever. So um, it was basically 39% of parents thought it should all be online. Mm hmm. 16% thought it should be all in person, right? which is definitely less. And then 44% voted for a mixed hybrid, right? which is interesting. And then 1% had no opinion, mm -hmm. probably don't have kids or just could care less. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. how do you not have an opinion on that? But yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, well, it says that they, they pulled only K through 12 parents. Right. So I think everyone does have Right. So that's my thing children. is they have, yeah. So how do you not have an opinion on that? Yeah. But, I find that maybe that's the error, the percentage of error. Yeah. But, but obviously I, th I think it's like this whole conversation of week to week, this is changing. I mean, we know like, okay, so the, the big 10 actually just announced they're going to restart the season. Oh, did they? Yeah. So you didn't even oh know that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. Um, so, Hot off the press. Yeah. So four <laughs> weeks ago, that was a no. Uh, but then as they're watching all the other conferences restart, as the NFL is restarting, as the NBA is getting near the end of the season with zero mm -hmm. COVID cases inside the bubble, as baseball has it under control, as schools are starting again, it's just like all these things start adding up and then people start it is literally changing probably this week to week. You see it just like yeah, start right, shifting. Right, right. I'm sure it would fluctuate. Yeah. yeah. In our area, New Albany, Ohio – which is a suburban community east of Columbus, uh, northeast. We, I know that the stats were, it was over 70% voted for all in person. Mm -hmm. So I know that that shows a lot of faith and confidence also in the school district, the superintendent, and even the city and how they're handling COVID and cases. We've had very low cases here. We've been super fortunate. Yeah. Uh, but so that uh, that will affect parents' confidence in sending their kids to school full time. So yeah, was, uh, the Columbus surrounding areas we've had one of the lowest areas, um, suburban areas around yeah, Columbus. Definitely. The other thing that's unique to us is we are we don't fall into um, like the the Columbus kind of city school district area either, where some of like Westerville and some of those can kind of they're they've got that Franklin County like they're in there. And so whatever Columbus schools do, like they do as well. So it's just interesting, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's jump into our value piece today. I know something that's kind of been on your mind is how to stay uh, focused during uh, high periods of distraction. I mean, working from home or kids going back to school and trying to get work done and busing them around everywhere. Yeah, definitely. I think, no one would argue these are high, um, there's been increasing stress, they're high stress days. And I mean, I'm curious if you are, if you're, you know, listening to this on the podcast, then just think through what are the daily distractions that are keeping you from your, for keeping you, um, from having quality time, um, in your work and productivity. What are those things? And if you're watching live, then definitely feel free to comment. I mean, I would love to know what those distractions are. They're probably uh, similar to what most people are experiencing. Um, 
But I read this, this cool article, honestly, and came across some solutions and techniques that can make a big difference. Uh, a psychologist, Tracy Stein, um, did a Psychology Today post and just gave her techniques and then we kind of modified some of this to what we personally use. Yeah. Um, but I think that distraction has been, well, not fun because who likes to be distracted? Um, but it's so easy to happen. Yes, it is. I just got a text on my phone and one of our team members is saying their flights tomorrow to Florida for a, a content oh, session no. just got canceled because of the hurricane. <laughs> so I'm sitting here literally being distracted while you're in the middle of it. I'm like, oh no. Oh, so just canceling God. hotels and travel and contacting the client. And it was a tropical storm, so it must be just getting worse. Um, Gosh. But I haven't been keeping up on that. So what were you saying? Sorry. So that's a perfect example of getting distracted <laughs> when you are focused on something yeah. and it's happening at a higher rate and, and, um, frequency right now. So yeah. let's dive into this. A few of, she has about, you know, four. This is inter interesting. Cause I actually like, it's funny cause we, we've kind of been doing this with the team a little bit on Mondays, mm -hmm. like noticing like more and more in meetings, people more and more on laptops somebody's like talking and somebody's over there on their laptop. And, and I've been actually like first kind of team meeting at 9 a.m. in the morning. At some point, like we're kind of just running through business, but then I'm like, okay, laptop's down. And everybody just kind of looks at me and they like shut their laptop. And I'm like, thank you, let's talk. Uh, Cause I'm just like, look, I mean, if, if we're doing a meeting and I'm saying something that I actually feel is important, then I actually feel like it's important for you to, uh, to have your attention. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I like that, I think that so I am one of those people I'm tracking with you in a meeting, um, on a sun or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm a lot of times I'll take notes as well. Um, cause you do a lot of coaching stuff on Monday mornings and I grab all the value out of that, but I love shutting my laptop and just going like, Hey, I'm going to really, really engage. So I think that yeah. it's just a really great cue. Right. We haven't been like, you know, it, it's not a rule. We haven't been like strict about it or anything like that. Um, because I actually think it's really hard for us as a creative agency to yeah. not allow that. Yeah. So in a lot of meetings, laptops are open. People are finding stuff. We're talking about things. We're working through uh, meeting agendas and that, but then there's times where I'm like, Hey, we're going to talk. And I just, I, literally want your undivided attention because I actually know you're doing other stuff and you're trying to multitask and I don't want you to right now. So pay attention. Right. Yeah. Right. So I think it's an important conversation. It's probably a good habit. I can start <laughs> champion, championing. Oh, no, that's fine. I, <laughs> I can, no, it's, when I need it, I, I'm paying I get attention. It. Yeah. Uh, the first thing, take care of your physical needs and some of this, you know, listen, we've talked about why is the sun, the sun's just coming in of course, it just mm -hmm. gets on me. Um, Get so sun off. <laughs> yeah, I know plenty of sleep. We've talked about some of this before, but we can't, I mean, this is just, this is stuff all of us need to hear. Um, how many hours do you think we average? Um, <clears throat> it totally depends on who's dealing with the kids in the morning for school. Yeah. It has come <clears throat> down to that. I mean, if on the, the, you, the mornings like, that I take the lead, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, and typically there's another one. Uh, it can be six or seven hours. On the mornings where you're taking the lead, I can get seven or eight hours. Yeah, or eight or nine. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm usually, it's like, the thing is you and I are typically in bed about 11, which it probably needs to be earlier than that. So what's 11 to six? <clears throat> that's... That's seven hours. So like that's my Monday, Tuesday. Today I'm up at... Eight, yeah. So I mean, it, it's a, it's could be a little bit longer, maybe maybe nine on some days. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, regular exercise, and also, but I'll mention the importance of listening to your body and and allowing your body to have rest days. I think are really important. You know? Yeah. Now I'll go. I'll go back to the sleep thing for a minute because I think I just had this conversation with you where I was like, oh, you know what it was with shutdown and quarantine? Was it? Mm -hmm. It was actually, I think, less about not traveling and more about the kids not having school and getting that eight hours of sleep every single night yeah. without having to get up early. That yeah. was like life-changing to me. Mm -hmm. And now it's just like if I, 
I can go to bed at 11, but then sometimes I'm just naturally waking up at 5.15, 5.30. I get out of mm-hmm. bed. I'm like, well, you know, then I'm getting six hours of sleep. We have been traveling a little bit more. So then it's like you have these like 6, 6 a.m., 5.30 a.m. wake up calls. And it, it starts to wear on me for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Sorry. Continue. It's, well, it's something to be mindful of. And yeah. and I, I don't know. I think that when everything, yeah, when your sleep is going to be decreased, we need to come up with a different plan. Mm-hmm. Especially for you. <laughs> to maintain your you thriving, right? I, know, I need more sleep than probably is normal, and I hate that, but it's just... It's okay. It just is what it I is. I can just see it. It's fine. It's knowing yourself. Yeah. Regular exercise, meditation. Um, you know something, a hack. If you are getting ready to get on a big phone call with a client in the middle of the day and you want to be really, really intentionally focused, distraction free, and just giving it your all, all of your mental clarity, I would suggest doing a couple minutes of meditation before the call Hmm. or, and, or listening to classical music. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You've been doing a lot of that. Yeah. I have been every day. Good nutrition. Um, oh, I forgot. I, well, it's fine. I left it in there. But I started, <laughs> I, I got this amazing journal by a gutsy girl. You can find her on a gutsy girl Instagram or a gutsy girl.com. Oh, that's like her brand name. Yes. Oh. Which is super cool because she is a gutsy girl all about gut health. Oh, mm, clever. Super clever. clever. I really like her. And I ordered her, her food tracking system. And I've actually never done this before. I probably should have a long time ago, but it's helping me eliminate certain foods and things that are triggers for my system and body. Mm -hmm. And just on the whole, I'm paying more attention to my diet and nutrition and um, physical health. So that's been a huge, huge bonus. Yeah. And then every, gosh, every Sunday I sit down, it's on my list. I just, I meal plan for the week for us. Uh, we look at the week where we're going to be, um, Bless what's going heart. on. And then I just plan meals and it helps kind of take that, that last minute, like, let's just get pizza. Cause it's easy type thing out of it, you know? Um, That'd be me. Maybe, so yeah. even this week, like Sunday is actually your brother's birthday. So you guys are at your mom's yeah. house, uh, but Monday night we did sushi bowls, chicken korma. Tonight we're doing takeout. We got DoorDash out there. It's just um, sitting out there. Korean bowls. And then Friday, we've got uh, pizza, Saturday taco. So mm-hmm. plan it out. I get to the grocery store, get everything I need, and the week is set. It helps us eat better. And I love you for it. <laughs> plan for your escape behavior. So this is a little bit challenging for me personally. So what are escape behaviors? Hmm. Well, the psychologist Stein defines them as those things you do to alleviate the stress or boredom that crops up whenever you have to work on a specific task or assignment. Hmm. So maybe something that you have been procrastinating on or just dreading getting involved in, you know, Um, it could be admin task or whatever. Um, Obviously the escape behaviors can vary from person to person, but it could be anything like checking your email in the middle of that time period where you're trying to stay focused, checking social media, getting really sleepy, So a few things that you can do, plan ahead of time to prevent mindless snacking. Maybe you're a snacker in the middle of the day and plan ahead, have something, you know, maybe have a really nutritious snack before you go and do that really quality work. Drink water and stay hydrated. That will really help prevent sleep eatiness. Mm -hmm. Or shots of espresso. Or that, (laughs) or matcha. Turn off notifications on your phone. Just do that and turn your phone down, put it away, put it in the other room. If you're really trying to have a quality block of creative or focus time. Yeah. I feel like that's like the number one culprit for most people. I mean, I have like all, almost all notifications turned off when I I got my like raise to wake turned off. So if I pick it up, I don't see anything like the screen does automatically come on. I need to do that too. Just cause it's like you, you pick up your phone and then the screen lights up and you see things and then all of a sudden you're into it and yeah, you know, but anyway, Uh, lastly, oh, you can like turn on upbeat music and the last thing I was going to mention was just the quality 60, Mm -hmm. um, kind of philosophy that you use with the team and personally, and it's definitely has influenced me to, you know, kind of take these 
one hour segments of time. Yeah. And yeah, it's one of the things we talk to the team just because everybody's remote and independent, but just encouraging them to do blocks of quality 60, like quality work, creative work, 60 minutes, block it. Um, the tendency is when you especially work from home, work on your own, you can do like five twelves or four fifteens or whatever where it's like you get 15 minutes but then you're distracted 15 minutes and you're distracted so if you can block out 60 and then give yourself 10 minutes to go get up and take a walk do something you'll really like you said just increase that focus yeah love that plan regular breaks um so i think that it's really hard for most people like to, you know a lot of people are working from home virtually and even if you are working, you know, at your office, it's hard to stay fully focused for lengthy period of, periods of time mm -hmm. and kind of force that on yourself. So science has proven take frequent breaks. Okay. And a popular approach is called the Pomodoro technique, which calls for 25 minutes of focus work. Isn't that like an Italian pasta sauce? Pomodoro is just making me hungry. Pomodoro sauce? I haven't done a lot of... Isn't reading. that a thing? <laughs> I think so. I don't know, so like, think of like a matador, like the... I don't oh. Know. And, mm. Ooh, that, uh, big meatballs on spaghetti. What are you talking about? Like with Pomodoro sauce? <laughs> oh, I'm starving. My gosh. Now I'm so Can hungry Can you say for my big door meatballs on the show? <laughs> Well, if You're I can, so hungry for big meatballs. I mean, balls? I could say sweaty balls. Oh. <laughs> My gosh. Oh, yeah. No, I don't hold back anymore. I mean, come on. Everybody that's, loves us. There's the title of the show. Good. I am so hungry for big meatballs. <laughs> Highest listened to show. This will be it. <laughs> One for the books. Oh, I was trying so tell to me describe about your Pomodoro the Pomodoro technique, technique of staying focused. 25 minutes of focus work followed by a five minute break with at least a 15 minute break every two hours. Oh man. Or you work 52 minutes and then take a 17 minute break, which is similar to the quality 60. Yeah. You're just yeah. kind of pushing that a little or bit. Or you just put two big meatballs over there and after 25 minutes, you know, you can go have them. Oh. Something I would like to mention that's been super effective for me, for my mindset and prioritizing <laughs> what I have to do every day. Are you going to recover? I don't know. <laughs> that, I this don't, is unexpected. I don't know. Um, is it that, that we can't say the word balls? I, I, you know, um, I think there's just a combination of words there that just... Okay. But yeah. <laughs> so, well, I think that's what just makes guys mm. laugh. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it's, so moving on, Michael Hyatt really has an incredible planner system, the focus, the full focus planner, excuse me. Yeah. And kind of his strategy is to pick the top three things that you can, you know, that you are committing to for the day. Mm -hmm. That has really been very helpful for lack of better words, um, and, and influential, I would say, in how I structure my day, because it helps you prioritize what needs, what three big things need to be done for the day yeah. for me to continue everything else. Yeah. And obviously that, that is definitely very wrapped around deadlines and timelines. So I look at my day and I'm like, what top three things, instead of saying what 10 things can I get done every day? What are top, my top three, it's achievable and I know I can do it. Yeah. And I really push myself to get those top three done. Then everything else really falls under the umbrella of um, just kind of minimal yeah. mundane tasks. Yeah, there's all kinds of science around like if you have, because I, as I get in this, I'd like wake up my to-do list, it's on my phone, but it would be like, you know, it's like 15 things. And I'm yeah. just like, oh my gosh, yeah. like what, what do I even have to do? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've tried to manage that to get it down. I'm somewhere between like the five to six, like a day is kind of my sweet spot. And I usually pick to try to, like you said, do the ones that are most important first. Um, and then- Is that because you're like an anomaly, five to six? <laughs> no, I just think that that's my sweet spot because not not all those are super important. Sometimes it's just like yeah. send so and so an email about this. Well, oh. I mean, you know, you could do that all day. Sure. You could do sixty of those. Um, but it's just that whole thing of too much. There actually becomes a point where it's too much. Yes, yeah. definitely. So, lastly, forgive yourself for losing focus. And I really love this point of um, 
Dr. Steins. These are stressful times and a lot of us can feel stuck at home more than we would like. Maybe your kids are virtual, maybe they're hybrid, you're constantly, there's always something cycling in the back of our brains, I feel like right now. Everything mm -hmm. is not, you know, congruent and flowing in the way that it used to. So we can't expect ourselves to maintain really the same level of focus and productivity. Um, it's probably un unrealistic and unfair expectations to ourselves, which is hard because we're in, in an environment that's demanding high levels of productivity and companies yeah. are, you know, fighting to succeed and thrive in this, you know, pandemic. So, yeah. um, she says specifically understand that it's normal to feel fatigued, scattered and wish things were different. And so I think I would say this, my encouragement would be to, to show yourself some grace every day, do what you can prioritize the things that we've discussed here and celebrate the small wins. Yeah. Don't let them go by like they're nothing. They are something. Um, call a friend or your mom or a neighbor or your partner and just say, I need five minutes to go. I did this thing today. It took a lot of extra energy from me. Um, maybe, maybe more than normal to like accomplish this and celebrate it. It's a win. You're moving, like you're moving towards your goals. And yeah. uh, that's something that's notable. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Great job. Tips to helping you stay focused during a distracted period. I mean, homes are, are now uh, workplaces and school buildings and you know, ESPN so, shows. Yeah, so it's 24 there's, there's a lot going on in our homes now more than normal. So ESPN. Good, good tips. Gotta love it. So football. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. If, if you were live here on Facebook, if not, never fear. We stream this show to all your favorite podcast channels, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. You can check us out there by searching for the Not So Late Show. Uh, find us there. Subscribe. You'll get these whenever we post a new one. Next week, we will not be around. Uh, we'll actually be in Arkansas, but we will come back in two weeks. We'll talk a little bit about our trip, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, maybe we'll just make the whole thing about, you know, um, air quality, sleep health. We could. Yeah. Totally. So. Bye, guys. All right. Thanks for hanging with us. See you next time.